Flooding rains coming to an end across the area, but additional rounds of showers and thunderstorms show up in the forecast. We'll time those just ahead. With an already saturated ground and more rain on the way, emergency management officials in Montgomery County are worried about flooding. A boulder blocks traffic on a Menifee County highway. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. Rain is finally beginning to move out of the area, but it has left a big mess behind. Yes, it has. High water closed roads, flooded cars, and even some homes in several communities today. This picture is from Four Mile Road in Madison County. Hmm. So we're asking, is there any relief in sight? We begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey in the First Alert Weather Center. How about it, Chris? Yeah, relief, uh, unfortunately, is just a relative term right now. Short term relief, longer term. We got some more rounds of showers and thunderstorms coming our way over the next several days. We look back at the past 24 hours worth of rainfall and you're talking about a swath of two to four inches of rain setting up shop from just north of Bowling Green right across the uh, Danville area uh, into parts of Casey County, Lincoln County, through Madison County all the way toward the Ashland area of northeastern parts of the area. To the north of that, by the way, some areas didn't even get a half inch of rain in the northern Kentucky. So our computer models yesterday that we were showing you that had three and four inch rain amounts in this area were dead on with the heavy rain threat last night into early this morning. The same areas that picked up on the most rain last night under flood warnings now. It's all the counties that are shaded in the green. Flood warnings are also out for parts of the Red River, the Licking River, and sections of the Kentucky River during this time. Creeks and streams will continue to recede. Rivers are going to swell over the next couple of days. Life First Alert Defender. A few showers continue to show up here across Interstate 75 down into Mount Vernon from Richmond. Into eastern Kentucky, the steady rains are now beginning to drift away. More of a showery pattern that we're seeing across parts of central Kentucky, and that's a trend that will carry us into the evening. Weather headlines, still some of those showers around, and some of those may pop back up into the day tomorrow. But I'm tracking additional rounds of some showers and some thunderstorms that try to join the mix. And guys, you know what happens from here? Those showers and storms will bring the potential for more heavy rains. An absolutely incredible rainy pattern that we're in across our part of the world. We'll break it down in greater detail when I come back in just a few minutes. And with that, there is concern about high water, even in communities that haven't flooded yet. Montgomery County is one of those areas where people are keeping a close eye on creeks and streams right now. WKYT's Mike Linden continues our first alert weather team coverage with a look at the situation there. As wet weather continues in Montgomery County and across the Bluegrass State, emergency management officials are closely monitoring creeks, streams, and roadways. Emergency management officials say the already saturated ground is to blame for local high water issues throughout the county. Earlier this morning, crews shut down a portion of US 460 due to water over the road, but it has since reopened. Nearby Slate Creek is also running higher than normal and has flooded neighboring backyards. EMA officials say much like 2010, it has been a difficult spring so far for Montgomery County. A couple weeks ago, uh, we received five to seven inches of rain in, in a short amount of time, and that caused some damage to some roads here in the county, and of course caused block just due to high water. So yeah, it's been difficult this spring. Delk says flooding and additional rainfall has made this year resemble 2010, a year where Slate Creek reached its banks and covered roadways. In Montgomery County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Emergency management officials want to remind drivers to never risk driving over a water covered road. The motto is simple turn around, don't drown. Heavy rains are also being blamed for a massive rock fall in Menifee County. It happened on Kentucky 1274 near the Rowan County line close to Cave Run Lake. A huge boulder bigger than a pickup truck is blocking both lanes. The state transportation cabinet has a crew on the scene working to break up that boulder and clear the road. Sam Smith continues our team weather coverage. As you can tell, this rock is massive and it'll take a massive effort to remove it. Kentucky 1274 was closed all day because of this boulder. Fortunately, no one was in its path when it fell from the hillside and onto the highway. The plan right now is to turn this large rock into several small rocks that will then be hauled off. Repairs will need to be made to the road. Officials will know to what extent when the rock is cleared. 
This boulder in the road is an inconvenience for those that have to take a detour around it. The size of it is something folks haven't seen before. Uh, well, where anytime we get heavy rains, uh, there's potential for uh, rock slippage and, uh, and falls, and uh, this is a little bit prone for that in this area. The hope is to have at least one lane open tonight or early tomorrow morning. In Menifee County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And remember, we can help you stay on top of the weather when you're away from the television. Visit WKYT.com for the latest radar, forecast, and weather headlines. After a lot of talk, it looks like Keeneland will be building a racetrack in southern Kentucky. The Times Tribune reports Keeneland will build the track off the Corbin Bypass. Work could begin as early as this summer. The horse race track will be called Thunder Gap. Keeneland hopes to have the track open sometime next year. The Fayette County School Rezoning Committee has finalized elementary, middle, and high school attendance maps. Those plans will be presented to the public tonight beginning at 6. They will also have online or be online for the Fayette County Public Schools website for folks to look at. More than 200 people are sick after an outbreak on two separate cruise ships. Both ships have docked in San Diego within 24 hours of each other. Danielle Nottingham is at the scene with the very latest. Passengers on the Legend of the Seas cruise ship arrived in San Diego Tuesday morning after 116 people on board became sick. Brooke Fagan says at first she thought she had food poisoning. I was in and out of the bathroom for quite a while the entire day and um, ended up. Um, you know, feeling very lethargic, very, very sick, very run down. Um, couldn't really get out of bed, um, ended up throwing up. Passengers say people got sick halfway into their two week trip after a stop in Guatemala. They pinpointed um, potentially that it was at the port in Guatemala that people ended up getting sick. The CDC and health officials are now working to determine the cause. The Legend of the Seas is the second cruise ship to dock here at the port of San Diego within 24 hours after an outbreak on board. On Monday, workers scrambled to disinfect the Celebrity Infinity, which was traveling from Fort Lauderdale and passed through the Panama Canal. 112 of its passengers and crew members reportedly contracted neurovirus. Contaminated food and water triggers the highly contagious virus. The main symptoms are vomiting and diarrhea. Passengers say crew members on the Legend of the Seas passed out pamphlets and took extra precautions. Well, I'll tell you to wash your hands, which we do anyway, but everywhere you went, they had gel. This is the fifth outbreak of sickness on cruise ships this year. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, San Diego. Royal Caribbean Cruises owns both ships that had the outbreaks. We've reached out to the company for comment, but haven't heard back. Its other company, Celebrity Cruises, previously issued a statement saying workers use special cleaning products and disinfectants to clean the ship. Well, as the world goes online and people increasingly spend more time with their phones than their friends, some Kentucky gamers are fighting back. Yes, they are. Our Deanna Stevens is out and about today with them with more on a fun weekend of staying offline. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are preparing for a fun weekend of games, and that's what it's all about, like board games. Check out this amazing collection. Crazy part is this is just a few of Greg's collection of uh, board games. Greg, how many do you have? I have about a thousand games. And you started collecting when? Uh, well, I inherited my dad's collect collection. And then in high school, I started buying my own, and I've been acquiring them ever since. And I like sharing them with people. I was going to say, I asked you, I said, do you really honestly play these games? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my family and I have a game night uh, every week. And then um, we over at uh, West Sixth, uh, twice a month, we have a game night on the first and third Mondays. Now, this is your partner, Chris, with Lexicon Gaming. You guys are preparing for Lexicon Gaming Convention this weekend. What is that all about? Well, it's an opportunity for people to learn new games they've never played before. There are tons and tons of games. We have tons of events all about learning new games. We have something really exciting called Five Family Games in 90 Minutes, and you can learn five new games in 90 minutes for your family. I love that. I, I asked, I said, I've got a, a nine year old, a 12 year old. What game can I play that's different? And you said, 
Well, one of the games that would be really different, I pulled this out, was Oz Flux. And it's a game based on The Wizard of Oz. And it's just a very strange game where the goal changes throughout the whole game as you play cards. Kids love this game. It's a great family game. We'll be playing it over the weekend. Okay, so here's a goal for you in all of this. Put your phones down. That, that's, what, that's what you all headline this with. You're like, put your phones down, put your electronics down, and play some games. Talk about that. How life has changed so much over the past couple of years. People don't take time to play board games. They don't take time to play board games, and it's so easy because work comes with you with the phone, plus you can just pull out one of those nice, easy games. But that's different than sitting down with people, and you can talk during the game. You can interact in a way that doesn't happen in the electronic world. And it's nothing against those things. It's just a different way of living life. All right. This weekend, how do folks get tickets? Uh, they go to our website, lexicongaming.com, and they can purchase them there, or they can just show up at the Clarion Convention Center. Uh, we open at noon on Friday, and we're open all weekend. They can purchase them there. I should add, when they do purchase their badge, they're going to get access to that 1,000 games. That's included with your badge, as well as almost 100 events of learning different games. I love what you're promoting. Take a weekend away and play some board games, folks. It is happening this weekend, Lexicom Gaming Convention. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. I play a mean game of Candyland if you're up really? for it. Okay. I've, how about well, Monopoly Life and Risk? Those were my favorites. Oh, boy. But those days are long gone. I'll stick I, with Candyland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a big night in Hollywood for Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, and the rest of the Marvel superhero gang. Suzanne Marquez has that story and more in your eye on entertainment. The stars of Avengers Age of Ultron walked the red carpet for the world premiere of what is expected to be the biggest movie of the year. Artificial intelligence. In this latest installment from the Marvel Universe, the superheroes try to defeat a high-tech villain who wants to destroy the human race. I mean, the scale of this is just, it's, it's just increased like crazy. Expectations are sky high for Ultron. It's the sequel to the original Avengers film, which grossed more than $1.5 billion worldwide. It's the third highest gross of all time. Oprah Winfrey will return to The Late Show with David Letterman one more time before Dave wraps up his show for good. George Clooney and Tina Fey are also among the guests announced for the final 28 episodes. And Kim Kardashian clutched daughter Northwest during a visit to an Armenian church in Jerusalem Monday. The reality TV star and husband Kanye West went to the centuries-old church to have their baby baptized. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Hollywood. We're almost at the point, I think, of using the word historic from what Chris keeps telling us about the rainfall in April. Boy, Chris, I don't know how much more of this rain folks can take. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think we can take very much more before we get back into some additional high water issues over the next week and change or so. And Sam mentioned the word historic. I'm going to show you some historic numbers coming up at 5 o'clock. So you definitely want to see that as we put the rainfall in perspective. Looking outside right now, and I'm looking at our four cams from Lexington, from Richmond, London, and Frankfurt, and all four cams for the first time today showing dry conditions. Temperatures are running way cooler than we should be. 61, the warmer spot into Frankfurt now, where we had a hint of sunshine a little earlier. Over the past 24 hours, rain numbers crazy on us. Anywhere from one to upwards of four inches of rain. Look at Stanford, 4.06 inches of rain, just a shade under four inches into Richmond, Liberty, Columbia, both better than three inches in Harrodsburg, a little under that three inch amount. If you encounter Flooded roadways, turn around, don't drown. Life first alert defenders still with some spotty showers throughout the region. Let's check on roads, by the way, here in Lexington. Here's Officer Don. Got a crash on Leestown Road. This one is near Forbes. It's outbound. It is an injury collision, though, so that's causing some problems for outbound Leestown. Left lane block to outbound Leestown at Forbes. Now back to the studio. To become a WKYT live driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the news tab, click on traffic for more information. A mountain lion that won't leave a home, a horse-drawn library, and a chimp that isn't a fan of drones. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Here's a mountain lion who has taken residence under a Los Angeles home. <laughs> Workers spotted him while installing security equipment in the home's crawl space. Animal Control tried a few tricks to get him out. Looks like he caught something there. They shot beanbag rounds and tennis balls and poked him with a stick to no avail. 
We believe that he's actually been in here for some time. We don't know how long, um, but he's real casual. And as you can see some of the footage, he was actually laid out real comfortable. That is an impressive animal. Yeah. Fish and wildlife say that the next step is to wait for the cat to come out on his own. Okay. He knows he has a good thing mm -hmm. going, I guess. Yeah. Well, you may have heard of a horse-drawn carriage, but what about a horse-drawn library? Some children in a small town in Argentina have enlisted the help of Pepe the horse to pull around a cart loaded with books. The children then lead the horse to areas that are off the grid to bring books to other children there. The children came up with the idea thanks to a lack of extracurricular activities at the school. Mm -hmm. People are not the only ones who are freaked out by drones. A chimpanzee went on, out on a limb to down a drone. He, his name is Tushi. He downed a drone all by himself uh, at a Dutch zoo. Tushi is notorious for having a good arm and throwing things. Well, the drone, worth a little more than $2,000, was demolished. Some of her friends were able to play with the drone. They took some ultra close up selfies, chimpanzee selfies. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, it's different. I guess the, they don't like things invading their yeah, space. You just never know what you're going to hear, Amber. Yeah, absolutely.